guys and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and today we're making a really fun project for the kiddos. Um, I got this fabric from Kimmy B Custom Fabrics. Um, they had just sent it to me for uh, some rep fabric and it just, I don't know, it just really just it sparked my imagination. So I have three different designs. Today we're going to be doing the Nintendo DS. That's easy to say. Uh, we're going to be doing the Nintendo DS. Uh, I've also done a N Game Boy and a Nintendo Switch. Um, but today we're going to be doing the uh, DS. I just thought it was really cool and I'll actually have the links for the other patterns to Cricut. Um, we're going to see how this goes because <laughs> I've never done this before. So I'm going to put the links down below in the description box. Hopefully they'll work. If they don't, I'll work on getting a paper pattern paper piece pattern together. Is that how I want to say it? <laughs> I'll work on a paper pattern if I need to. If not, hopefully the link works and that way your Cricut um, can just kind of cut it out for you and you don't have to do all of the crazy designs um, by hand. So just a little close up view. Um, I used foam as the base because I actually wanted the buttons when I sew down and top stitch them I wanted them to kind of stand out a little bit so that they kind of felt like buttons um, and so with this technique and doing the uh, reversed applique you can actually cut out the vinyl uh, put your fabric behind it and then just sew an eighth of an inch all the way around and you have started your reverse applique this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time just have not had the time so the boys gave me an excuse to make them bags <laughs> and I will hopefully have put pictures up for you guys so let's get started all of the measurements for what I would consider the gusset if you've never heard that word before it is this piece right here the top gusset and then the bottom gusset um, I'll give you the measurements for all of that the only thing that you're going to need to download uh, or go on Cricut for is the actual template for the Nintendo DS. Now you can create your own, go for it. It didn't take me as long with the DS as it did for the Switch. I had to figure out how to line all those up. But anyway, so let's get started. All right, so I've got my design all queued up on my computer. Make sure that when you go to print it out that you make sure that you mirror it because you're gonna be putting your vinyl face down. So I've got the pretty side all down and make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, when I go to cut it out, I've made sure that it's uh, mirrored and then we're going to look for the type of cut that we're going to do, which you cannot see. So for the cut, I'm using the Outdoor Vinyl Bonded. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that is a thicker, it's for thicker materials and that kind of a cut. All right, now, so we're going to, um, I've measured out 11 and 3 quarters this way, and then I've kind of centered it on my mat, and then I've measured out 14 and a half inches down, cut it all out, put it on my mat face down. Now we're going to click that we're using the outdoor vinyl. And the cricket's going to do the rest of the work for us. Now that she's all done, we're going to take and get this off of our mat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the fabric that I'm putting in the top and then the fabric that I'm going to be grabbing to put towards the bottom. And then I'll show you how to line everything up and get it all ready. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is grab the fabric that you want to use for your design to be in the middle. And my panel that I had was a little too large, so I came down to the bottom. My kids would beat me right now if I couldn't remember his name, so we're just not going to talk about it. So <laughs> we're going to get it centered to where we want it to be. And then go ahead and mark with a pen. I always do this on like the back of the fabric. That way it doesn't um, show up on your design. Normally what you want to do, do not cut it out the exact size as that. You need it to be a little bit larger. You can do a half an inch to make yourself feel a little bit better so you have a little bit more 
um, room to work. But um, I'm probably going to do a half an inch just to be on the safe side. But that just gives you, that just shows you uh, the window space that you have to work with. And then make it a half an inch bigger all the way around. And then we're going to interface it. And then we're going to um, put it on the back of our panel and start stitching it together. All right, so we've got our cut pieces all cut out. Um, I went and I uh, interfaced my fabric. I went ahead and used uh, Decoville Light just because I like that it makes it a little bit thicker and I'm hoping that it'll last a lot longer. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some of this clear vinyl. You can get it at Walmart. A lot of people use it for like tablecloths and stuff, um, but just so that it looks more like a screen, um, that's what we're using. Uh, so I went around both of our little circles here and I put some double-sided tape. Now I put it a quarter of an inch away from the edge so that when I'm sewing um, an eighth of an inch in, I'm not hitting this tape. Because if you hit the double-sided tape, your needle will get all gunky and it won't thank you for that. So I'm going to take the double-sided tape off and the clear uh, plastic stuff I cut it just a little bit bigger than my actual panel just because I like to make sure that I've caught that and it's not going anywhere. So we're going to grab our plastic and we're going to put that face down. You're going to do this on both, both sides. Okay. So put that down. And the next thing that I'm going to do is you can do the double-sided tape again on all four corners and then put your piece down like this. The next thing that I would do, once that's done, once you have a double-sided tape and everything is held in place and it's not going to like shift around while you're trying to sew it, <laughs> the next thing that you're going to do after you do the double-sided tape is an eighth of an inch from the edge you're going to sew real slow around these corners, but you're going to sew all the way around, but take your time when you're getting to these corners. All right, so I have got both of them all done, and as you can see, I've got my picker out. Now, when you see the problem and see why I need to pick this out, make sure that you click the like button. Do you see it? <laughs> ah, there's a string in between the plastic and the fabric. So this is the point when you're laying everything at down, just make sure you don't have anything like that in between them. Or if you want and you want to be really creative, you could put stuff in between the plastic and the fabric so that the kid can sit there and like kind of push them around. I've seen the little fun things where they do like a, um, a maze and then they can take the little whatever it is and they can just kind of take their finger and do a maze. Just an idea. Uh, so now I have to pick this out with and make sure that I get the top stitching all perfect because once you do the top stitching, that's pretty much it. So. <laughs> don't be like me all right so I've got all of the top stitching straight got that little piece of string out everything's all done the next thing we need to do is we need to fill in these holes I've put the double sided tape right here and what I've done is I've cut out some strips that'll just go right on top of that they're actually a lot bigger than they probably need to be but you can always cut the excess away right side of your vinyl to the wrong side of your uh, outside vinyl and then just let that double sided tape hold it there and you're going to do that to both sides so that you have the black showing on both sides so let's take the tape off of this side all right I'm trying to keep my vinyl away from the side, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to cut this down in the end anyway. All right, so we got that all done. The double-sided tape is going to hold the black vinyl underneath really still so that I can do what I need to do. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to grab some foam. And uh, these, this is the kind of foam that you can interface to another piece. But since this is vinyl, you can't really interface it together. Um, so what I did was I cut it the same exact size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it all the way around so that it can't move. 
making sure it's where it's supposed to be. Once you get it all clipped up and it can't move where it's going, the very first thing that I'm going to do, I can hear the kids running around downstairs. The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basting stitch all the way around the edges just to hold the foam to the vinyl. And then once these clips are gone, it'll be a whole lot easier to do the little um, stitching for all of these little tiny circles and not having to worry about moving these clips out of my way. So I would do the basting stitch all the way around and then tackle the top stitching for these. Again, I'm doing an eighth of an inch around the plus sign, the circle, and all these little circles. <laughs> All right, so we're all done. Now, I don't know if you could see it or not, but the reason I wanted to put foam in is because it makes the buttons kind of poofy and it just makes them feel like they would be more of the buttons. So I like the foam for the fact that it, it makes it poofy, but also kind of the stability of the bag is really, really nice using the foam. So it's up to you. You don't have to use foam. You could just finish it Decoville Light or something like that or your regular interfacing, it's up to you. Um, but I just like the foam because it even feels kind of like a button. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna do is gonna flip this uh, wrong, right side down. And then I use waterproof canvas for all of my bags for the linings. Now, this is gonna be um, finished with binding. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I've got a piece that's the same exact size as my front. I'm gonna put right side up my vinyl and then clip all the way around and then sew uh, just basting stitch all the way around so that the top piece and the lighting piece end up being one total piece. Now for the back, I wanted to keep it really simple because I only had so much of this fabric and, or this vinyl and my son wanted it to be green. So we did green, but I didn't have enough for the back. So we're just going to do a simple black back. I am also going to use foam. Um, I'm going to put a big old sandwich together with the vinyl, the foam, and then another piece of waterproof canvas. I'm not adding any zippers into this. I'm not adding anything because you're spending so much time on this front. So I'm just going to sew around this, take my little sandwich, Oh, waterproof canvas is the right way. So you have your back fabric, your foam, and then your waterproof canvas should be facing out. And these will be your front and your back panels. All right, so we've got our front panel. It has got the lining fabric on it. You can put a zipper on this if you want. I chose to keep it plain because it's just my kid's book bag and he doesn't really need like a ton of pockets and stuff. So. That's done. I've also got the back vinyl, the back um, lining fabric. Now you're gonna put this together just like you would the, Z the Zinnea. I'll put the name up there because I can never say it right. Um, <laughs> um, the exact same thing. So if you've never done that bag before, you should check it out because it's a really great bag. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I made my gusset zipper I guess it would be called the zipper gusset, <laughs> 21 and a half inches because I wanted it to be pretty big to go across um, the top of my bag and check out that zipper pull. If my camera will focus, check out that zipper pull to go with this. That's from uh, Kimmy V Custom Fabrics, which the fabric is also from there. But anyway, back to this. 21 and a half long by two and a quarter wide. I added the foam again to this because you want everything to kind of have this structure. And if you don't put the foam onto it, your bag is going to kind of like sink at the top and the bottom. So add foam to the top and the bottom of your gusset. Um, I will give you the measurements for the bottom gusset when I get there because I'm not quite there yet. So I'm going to put the zipper gusset together. It's very simple. Just put the right side of your outside fabric to the right side of your zipper and then your lining fabric right side to the wrong side of your zipper. Sew it down, turn it around and top stitch it. 
You guys have done this before. If not, I have several videos of purses that I've made like this um, that'll have those instructions on there. All right, so what did you think? Reverse applique is a whole lot easier than people think it is. It's very, very simple. It's just a matter of cutting out your shapes, putting your fabric behind it, and then just sewing around it so that it stays in place. Now, something that I did not do that you can do, and this is completely and utterly up to you, you could do a light coat of the base coat stuff that we use for like the dice bowls and stuff that I made the video for. Um, you could do that on the edges before you sew everything down, just so that the edges wouldn't get kind of funky after time. Um, I don't think you're going to have to worry too much about it, but it's up to you if that's something that you've decided that you want to do. Um, for the gusset, that was pretty simple. If you guys don't know how to put gussets together, I have several videos that I've made um, with similar uh, binding techniques so that you just make the gusset and then bind it. And it's a whole lot faster than trying to do like a drop-in or something like that. So if you've never shopped at Kimmy V Custom Fabrics before, you should really check them out. They're not only doing their custom fabric, but they're also starting to do their own hardware. You too. <laughs> I love, love, love their hardware that they've been doing to match the fabrics that you can get. That way everything kind of just flows and goes together and you don't have to get like separate stuff. So check out Kimmy B's Custom Fabrics. Um, they've got a, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and also stay tuned if you like Harry Potter. There's a really cool design coming out very soon. Um, they're designing the fabric right now. And yours truly designed a bag and there will be a video and I think you guys are really going to like it. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Or if you have any questions, comments, something wasn't made clear, just put those in the comment section. I check those daily. Um, again, if you want to see some of the cool stuff that's coming up, I cannot wait for you guys to see the new purse patterns. Um, make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you won't miss those. Thanks for joining us again on FaithWorks Designs. Bye, guys.